want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the suppression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the streets. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! <sighs> that was a nice minute filler right there. Yeah. Now, l- last week on the show, Larry, we did a half-assed conspiracy segment. It wasn't even an official conspiracy, because I, I just started looking like 20 minutes before the show. Into the Malaysian airliner, remember? And we had a couple of good stories about that, possible reasons why that went down or anything. Well, I I didn't – remember I said I'd, I'd do more research, and I really didn't. No, I figured you didn't. I'm very busy. Yeah. But I, I did trace the one story about the secret <clears throat> cargo on the – and was the plane diverted to Diego Garcia Naval Base. That story originated with a very uh, disreputable Soviet journalist. Yeah, okay. So, don't pay that one too much mind. But, uh, yeah, so anyway. But this week, Larry, this week, I did at least two hours of research. Really? That's a lot. I started around 7 o'clock tonight, I think. So, <laughs> yeah. Right before the show. Um, <laughs> you know, well, the big news story in the world, Larry, in the world of America, Ebola. Yeah. Are you oh, yeah. terrified of the Ebola virus? Because I know the Ed was very concerned with Ebola last time we talked to him. He was, yeah, thought he was going to get the Ebola. Are you worried about the Ebola, Larry? Not even a little bit. Oh, really? Nice. Nah, I'm not a Ebola. Give me a break. I think it's made up. <laughs> you think it's all made up? I think it's fake. <laughs> all right, fair enough. So people aren't dying, or nah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they're dying, but they probably know things the government wants to silence them about. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the Ebola, um, what, what should, where should we start with the Ebola? Uh, well, I guess uh, <clears throat> there's been a couple cases here in the United States. And uh, maybe I'll look, at, I'll, we'll look into the background of the first guy who died, uh, Duncan. He, he he brought it the virus to Texas, right? And he uh, yeah. died. And uh, there's some weird things about his backstory and who, who, how he got to America and stuff, and who may have funded him to come to America. Um, but well, that's another a story for another day, because I don't have all the details there. And then <laughs> another NBC cameraman got uh, the virus. He he came back to the states and he was treated. And that guy has a very interesting story as well. Um, he he's apparently a reincarnated Buddha. Or something. Ah, like that. he's Buddha. Yeah, apparently, and uh, also his his dad just happens to work for like um, a company that's big into the uh, Obamacare. Ah, and, how convenient. And he and he used to write articles about Ebola and why people aren't taking it seriously, and then he just happened to get Ebola and survive. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and then of course a nurse has it. And she was just, uh, I think, transported to Maryland, right? Or something. But, I don't uh, know. Yeah, something. People were very suspicious because they, they showed uh, videos of her being transported, and they had like five people in hazmat suits around her hospital gurney there, so they're wheeling, her, they're wheeling her onto the plane. And then there's just a dude walking behind them in uh, normal clothing, and people are like, what is going on? You, you have five people in hazmat suits and then just a dude. Um, that's probably not the best way to – prevent the spread of the disease, and the CDC came out and said, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. That was following official protocol. We always have one person not in a hazmat suit so that uh, they can help the people in the hazmat suits navigate the stairs and stuff, because I guess they can't see <laughs> And that sounds like perfect logic to me, because yeah. um, <laughs> uh, how would you like to be that guy? Yeah, how <laughs> like, do you get um, paid for that job? Who, who do you have to piss off? Uh, like, can't I... Have a suit uh, yeah. because they're still not even sure technically how Ebola gets spread. They think they they swear it's not airborne. Of course, the CDC director gave a speech the other day where he said you can't get it from a bus. 
but if you go on a bus, you can give it on a bus. And people are like, wait, what? <laughs> how, can you, how can you go on a bus and give it, but then another person can come on the bus and not get it? If you're yeah. giving it, you're giving it to something or someone. So, yeah, uh, the CDC is just incompetent. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And, and apparently they say, well, the, the disease isn't, it can't be spread airborne through more than three feet. Well, that still means it's transmitted through the air, technically, I would say. And I, usually on a bus, you're closer than three feet to somebody. Yeah, but this poor sap following the gurney onto the plane, he was like, what, five, six feet back? So you're telling me, like, you know, if the wind kicks up, <laughs> he's not going to be affected? Or, yeah. um, you know, they slow down, he takes an extra step. Oops, I'm suddenly infected. No, it's all nonsense. And at some point you got to understand, like, what are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with all propaganda and fear? Are we dealing with this shocking incompetence at the, from the CDC? And, and really, uh, we've talked about this many times on the show, but – Nine. What? What is it? What do? You, what percentage of the people in the world are just idiots, Larry? I would say oh. upwards of ninety, right? At Over least. 90. Yeah. yeah. And, and those people, you know, they infiltrate all sects of life. Not just, you know, they're not just all you know, blog talk radio hosts. No, and they work for the government. They're in the, all these companies. So it's like maybe we're just dealing with people in power who are just incompetent, and they're not doing. Because explain to me why they they haven't stopped the flights out of West Africa. I don't know. Cause I Does that make want... any sense? If you have a, a deadly, contagious virus that could ravage the human population of the free world, and you're like, no, let's keep flying planes in and out of there. Yeah. Cause, do you think yeah, maybe it's not wrong? Dead, do you think it's maybe not as deadly and as serious as they make it out to be? Do you think it's just uh... well, here, there's some weird stuff going on. So let's let's take a look at it. So you go to the official CDC site, and they have uh, counts of all the Ebola outbreaks over. Ebola first uh, surfaced in 1976, I believe, in uh, the Sudan, uh, around that area. Uh, But uh, since March 2014, this most recent Ebola outbreak has been in West Africa, in three countries in particular, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, all right? Uh, we have up to date we have eight thousand nine hundred and seventy three reported cases with four thousand four hundred and eighty four deaths. However, four thousand six hundred and fifty five of those cases are confirmed laboratory Ebola. All right, so they believe those were definite Ebola. The other ones are just uh suspicious Ebola, whatever. And of those two thousand four hundred and thirty one died, so we have a mortality rate of fifty two percent mortality rate on the Ebola. All right. Yeah. So that ain't Ain't good, you know. But in the old days, they used to always say it was like over ninety. But uh, the, the reason people die from Ebola a lot of times is uh, dehydration, and because uh, they get severe diarrhea. And as long as you're giving people fluids through IVs and stuff, the, the mortality rate gets to about fifty. And then if you can treat the other symptoms from there, you have an even better chance of surviving. All right. And the reason it's so deadly in Africa is because just the sanitation, the health care, it's not so good, you know. So uh, it, it can be very, very deadly. All right, so from April 2014, though, prior to this outbreak, back to 1976, there have been 22 Ebola outbreaks in, across Africa. Twenty of them occurred in Gabon, Uganda, and the Republic of Congo, which are all located in Central Africa, uh, you know, a good bit away from Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. All right, it's like over in the middle of the continent. Those three are over on the western end, all right, uh, like the little part that juts out of Africa. You, you're right. familiar with Africa, Larry, right? I've seen it once or twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know that, that th- at the top, that part that sticks out to the left, that's where we're talking about the west western Africa, the the, right. the Ebola outbreak right now. These other uh, three countries which have, have had 20 of the 22 outbreaks are in central, deep central, right in the heart of Africa. And the only other uh, – cases not from those three countries were in southern Sudan in the 1976 and 79. So prior to this outbreak, Ebola's never been over there. There was one instance where a guy in the Ivory Coast had it, but he, he got it from a monkey, and uh, it was treated. He was a doctor who performed an autopsy on a diseased monkey, and he got the Ebola. But that was the only – that was just it, him, once, and it was treated, and he, he survived. Everything's fine. So in terms of serious outbreaks, there's never been an outbreak in west coast of Africa until now. So that's kind of yeah. suspicious. All right. So why now? Yeah, why now? 
now. After all these years, why now did Ebola get to Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone? Well, a fellow named Dr. Cyril Broderick, he's a Liberian scientist and associate professor at Delaware State University's Agriculture and Natural Resources Department, told the Daily Observer, uh, which is uh, Liberia's leading newspaper, that the U.S. Department of Defense is responsible for the outbreak. Quoting uh, the newspaper here, the U.S. Department of Defense is funding Ebola trials on humans, trials which started just weeks before the Ebola outbreak in Guinea and Sierra Leone. The reports continue and state that the DOD gave a contract worth $140 million to Tecmira, a Canadian pharmaceutical company, to conduct Ebola research. This research work involved injecting and infusing healthy humans with the deadly Ebola virus. Hence, the DOD is listed as a collaborator in a first-in-human Ebola clinical trial, NCT 02041715, which started in January 2014, shortly before the Ebola epidemic was declared in West Africa in March. Okay. Prior to the Ebola outbreak, the UN had also been conducting a nationwide vaccination campaign throughout Guinea. And after the vaccination campaign, oops, Ebola broke out. <laughs> See? That's why I don't get flu weird. shots. So a couple months back, a fellow named uh, Dr. Ben Newman from the University of Reading appeared uh, in a video about Ebola for Bloomberg News. And he's just giving the basics on Ebola. And people, the, the point of the video was um, they were curious, well, why isn't there a vaccine for Ebola? And this was months back, like early summer, I think, and uh, before everything started getting intense. And he said, uh, well, uh, these vaccines, uh, quote, they, they take a lot of money. And right now, uh, in the history of what we know at least, there have been fewer than 5,000 people who have been infected with Ebola. It sounds scary, but I don't know that there's enough uh, panic or enough people who are potential customers for these drugs to warrant a company, a private company anyway, putting the money it would take to develop this. Now, um, the Ebola scare has already been a big boon to uh, Big Pharma. Two experimental Ebola vaccines have already been fast-tracked, and their company stocks have soared. The government has already invested, uh, I think, upwards of $40 million to a company that makes ZMAP, MAP Biopharmaceuticals, Inc. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people are getting rich off this already. Um, the National Institutes of Health has come out and said they may need to vaccinate entire countries. Right. Now, if you go to Liberia and Sierra Leone and Guinea, uh, there's a weird thing going on there. Uh, there's a, a big campaign called Ebola is Real. And if you go to a website called uh, TrueStreamMedia.com, you can find a video documenting the Ebola is Real campaign. But basically, you can't tell uh, at what point is this the government trying to you know, get word out in the streets that, hey, you know, we're dealing with a deadly disease here. Let's be careful. Or is this just propaganda to, to scare people and say, hey, this exists, even though you, know, you don't believe it for some reason. And maybe – because, Larry, it's just me. If I'm living in an African country and I see my family, my friends – Coworkers, the other people I know, just dropping dead from a deadly, deadly disease. I'm going to believe it. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'll believe. Holy hell, a bowl is real. I don't need you to tell me it's real. I'm seeing my family die. Uh, apparently, that's not the case over there. The Africans over there, Liberia, they don't think it's real. Now, why is that exactly? But anyway, the, the campaign, it's so pervasive throughout their society. There's huge billboards. Uh, the two uh, hit songs are, are about Ebola. Like, <laughs> in the popular radio, like the Iggy Azalea of Liberia sings about Ebola, Larry. You see what uh, I'm saying? There's, probably her. There's every phone call they make, every incoming phone call, when you pick up the phone, there's a public service message saying Ebola is real. <laughs> every speech a politician gives, they start off by saying Ebola is real. It's throughout everything. It's like – so. Again, is this them trying to get, you know convince people? Why are they convincing them? Because you think people would know if you know this is going on. There's also been video of uh, people saying they have Ebola symptoms and going to these hospitals, and then uh, they're caught later in the video acting like not very sick. And then the people who took them to the hospitals are seen walking away carrying a wad of cash. What? So, yeah. Again, go to. Uh, TrueStreamMedia.com and Ebola is real, or Google that up on YouTube. You can find very weird behavior. All right. Now, a couple other things to consider about Ebola. The, the people there in Liberia, they say anytime someone gets sick, they're just counting it as Ebola. 
It could be cholera. It could be any number of diseases. But if you show, uh, if you have a fever, they just say you got Ebola, and they're chalking up to Ebola. Uh, the leading test for Ebola is what's known as a PCR test. And you basically take a small sample size of a biological material and you blow it up millions of times and you count for the existence of not really a virus but a protein trail of a virus or something. And it's not very accurate in uh, diagnosing viral diseases, especially with Ebola. And uh, the fellow who says it's not a good test for diagnos or diagnosing viruses is the guy who uh, invented it, a Nobel Prize winner named Dr. Uh, uh, Kerry Mullis. And so the guy who invented the test for Ebola the, says it's not accurate for testing for Ebola, yet that's the test they use. Huh. So I'm guessing not as many people have Ebola as they think have Ebola. It yeah. could be any other disease, you know. All right. Uh, complicating matters further. <clears throat> people throughout Liberia and Guinea and whatnot, they've been caught dumping formaldehyde in public water supplies. When ingested, formaldehyde creates Ebola-like symptoms. People dressed as nurses have visited villages uh, giving Ebola vaccines that turn out to be poison. It's suspected organ traders and nefarious water companies are taking advantage of the panic to, uh, you know, profit from it. So, like, the, the one guy who got caught dumping formaldehyde into the water system, he said he was paid to do it. And uh, they think it's uh, a water – people who sell bottled water are trying to poison the water supply, saying that Ebola is being spread through the water, so you have to buy their water. And also the – the, the nurses that showed up with the fake vaccines, uh, they would take the bodies away. The bodies would be returned with organs missing. So, again, who knows how, many, uh, how much of that going on is contributing to the Ebola count of uh, Ebola cases and the fear and everything that's going on. Yeah. So what does our country do in response, Larry? Again, we keep letting planes in and out. Like, no one seems to care. Uh, we don't follow correct protocol for treating Ebola here when people show up in the hospital with Ebola symptoms. And uh, Obama named an Ebola czar. <laughs> and fella who's going to lead the assault on Ebola here in the United States. Make sure we're doing everything we can to fight Ebola. So what would you do, Larry? You're, you're going to name an Ebola czar. You're president of the United States. Who would you interview or who would you appoint to be the Ebola czar? Would you start with doctors, Larry? You would think so. Medical experts? Uh, probably, Some, yeah. Someone familiar with viruses and d contagious diseases and pandemics and that, all that kind of nonsense? No, Obama hires a, a, a crooked lawyer and a, a political insider. Yeah. Huh. Uh, we got a that lawyer. Seems, seems about right. Yeah. All right. I would. You know, what I else would Obama hire does? Mike it's, Rowe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He would. He would get to the bottom of it, and he would do the it without being guy. too smartassy yeah. about it. Uh, Obama has also sent troops to Africa. We will send soldiers to shoot the virus. Apparently. Oh yeah, I just kind of, on the, yeah, yeah. Because if you're going to send help, the, the, obviously West Africa they need help. Send them aid. China yeah. is sending aid. They're sending doctors. Sending aid. All these countries are sending aid. But uh, the U.S. we send troops. Well, they're yeah. sending aid as well, but no doctor, troops. Yeah. Well, now, the Ebola might be armed. But it just seems weird because now you got to train all these troops in the proper way to handle Ebola and, and victim. It seems like uh, maybe they're going there for a different purpose. These troops. Plus, you know what else? They're going to be coming home. Yes, that's very oh. good, Larry. Yeah. Uh, so it's just bizarre. So, what other reasons could these troops? What are they doing exactly? So, this would be the story to watch in coming weeks is to see exactly what these troops troops are doing. Because are they uh, helping somehow limit and transport supplies and that kind of stuff and limit the exposure to people with the virus? I don't know how. But uh, or they, will they be securing land from Chinese interests? Will they be forcing an end to Liberian diamond mine strikes? Will they be securing Nigerian oil? These are yeah. all possible concerns for American troops, because China has surpassed the U.S. in African trade. Uh, they've earned they earn about 200 billion annually to the U.S. is 110 billion, and uh, Africa is very rich in natural resources: diamonds in Liberia, the oil throughout Nigeria, and all kind of other great national re natural resources are just there for the taking. And the U.S. has wanted to get into Africa for years. Remember, uh, years back, they had the Coney campaign. we got to get in and stop Coney. Oh, yeah, Coney, yeah. Complete fraudulent hoax of a campaign. Yeah. Coney was never a, a, a problem in that area at the time. In fact, he was probably dead by the time they started that campaign. 
And that died down because uh, people realized, hey, this is all bullshit. But that was the U.S. is trying to get in, the U.S. trying to get in there and put their uh, foot in the door in Africa to establish a presence in Africa. Then uh, I just saw today that uh, they brokered a deal with the Al Qaeda fella who, who kidnapped the, the Nigerian girls. We got to rescue those Nigerian girls. That was also bullshit. And uh, it's just another excuse for the U.S. to get a military presence or some sort of presence, a peacekeeping presence in Africa. And why do they want to get into Africa? Well, United States Africa Command, AFRICOM. It's a plan that's been in the works since 2007 and uh, under uh, during George Bush's second presidency, George W. there. The mission statement for AFRICOM, or for the United States Africa Command, is in concert with interagency and international partners, it builds defense capabilities, response to crisis, and deters and defeats transitional threats in order to advance U.S. national interests and promote regional security, stability, and prosperity. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so, uh, but at the United States Africa Command Conference held at Fort McNair on February 18, 2008, Vice Admiral Robert T. Mueller, the American head of AFRICOM at the time, who has since passed away in 2011, uh, he said, and I quote, protecting the free flow of natural resources from Africa to the global market is one of AFRICOM's guiding principles. So, again, they just want to get in there to basically rape Africa. Africa. Yeah. yeah. So is Ebola just a convenient excuse for Af- American military and AFRICOM to get in? Oh, we're here to help you. We're here to help you. And then they established their hubs there in, 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 throughout Africa, and uh, now we're there. We got to stay here to help fight this deadly pandemic. You know, it's and uh, the new Coney. Yeah. So those are some questions about the, the Ebola. So now, but it, so if the Department of Defense. Did they intentionally inject people to give them the Ebola virus and start this? I don't know. But uh, you tell people that, and right away they'll say, oh, that's crazy. No one would ever do such a thing. But the United States government has a long history, a very long history of doing experiments on civilians. Yeah. Not only foreigners, but also right here in the United States. So let's just go through a, a few to remind people in case they, they forgot. Um, well, in 1940, uh, 1940s, from 46 to 48, uh, the United States led human experiments in Guatemala on uh, involving syphilis. Doctors infected soldiers, prostitutes, prisoners, and mental patients with syphilis and other sexually transmitted diseases without the informed consent of the subjects. Now, uh, how much does that suck to get syphilis, but you don't even get to, like, bust a nut? Yeah. The fun way to get syphilis, yeah. Yeah. Um, 83 people died. And it, it took until 2010 for the U.S. to formally apologize to Guatemala for conducting the experiment. All right. Of course, we also had the uh, syphilis experiments in the Tuskegee Airmen. When the uh, black soldiers were given – well, actually, they already had syphilis in the U.S. Uh, black sharecroppers in Tuskegee, Alabama, they were 400 of them had syphilis already, and the government knew it. But they, they could have cured them, but they didn't. And they kept it going. They wanted to study them and how syphilis took their body from 1932 to 1972. Syphilis was cured in 1947, penicillin. And they did nothing to treat those men for the other uh, 30, almost 30 years. They kept it going and uh, subject, didn't even tell these men they had syphilis. So, yeah. But, no, the U.S. government would never do such a thing. All right. Um, there's also uh, – uh, they did radiation experiments throughout the Manhattan Project, detonating nuclear weapons and followed the radiation to see how it affected people. Oh, here's a here's one you'd like, Laura, uh, Larry. Uh, Operation Midnight Climax. Oh, yeah. Right. Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Uh, it involved safe houses in New York and San Francisco built for the sole purpose to study LSD effects on non-consenting individuals. But in order to lure individuals there, the CIA made these safe houses out to be, wait for it, brothels. Oh, Prostitutes yeah. on the CIA payroll. Uh, lured clients back to the houses. Instead of having sex with them, though, they dosed them with a number of substances, most famously LSD. This also Ooh. involved ex- extensive use of marijuana. Yes. The, exper- the experiments were monitored behind a two-way mirror, kind of like a sick, twisted peep show. Nice. And uh, this article is written by Robert Wab- Wabash, W-A-B-A-S-H, from, at WarIsCrime.com. But he lists 13 instances of uh, the U.S. experimenting on civilians, including their own. But there's more than that, all right? This is nothing new. Uh, they, the CIA released the whooping cough virus in Tampa Bay using boats and uh, caused a whooping cough epidemic that killed 12 people. 
the Navy sprayed San Francisco with bacterial pathogens uh, to see how uh, pneumonia developed in citizens. Um, Savannah, Georgia, and Avon Park, Florida, the Army released millions of mosquitoes in the hopes they would spread yellow fever and, and dengue fever. The swarm left Americans struggling with fevers, typhoid, respiratory problems, and the worst of stillborn children. Ugh. This is nothing new. So if they did it this time, it would just be a, a continuation of a already established pattern. It wouldn't be anything new. Yeah. So I don't know. Huh. Now, because the end goal here, some people say, well, is it population control in Africa? No. I think if this is a conspiracy, it's to get the U.S. into West Africa, like I said, for to get control of the land and to prevent – to battle China. Because really the big war right now behind the scenes is China and the U.S. For, uh, for African resources. That's what's going on here behind the scenes. So so the U.S. Ebola gets them in there. And, and also uh, it, it's a way to push those vaccines, mandatory vaccinations. It could be a boon to Obamacare. Uh, if if everyone has to get uh, Ebola vaccines, Obamacare uh, – that would finally solidify Obamacare in our, in our culture. It would galvanize the country around Obamacare. <coughs> so there's a lot of stuff going on here. But I usually just follow the money, you know, so who knows. So who knows if – but that, that Liberian doctor and the people in Liberia, they were saying uh, the Red Cross was giving out the stuff to people, and the people who took the, the vaccines from the Red Cross developed the bowl of it. So huh. um, who knows? What, what are you going to do? But it, it certainly seems suspicious that they're, they're not being uh, more careful with precautions in handling Ebola in this country. And is it just because they know it's really not – Contagious and like these people were given it on purpose to spread fear. Uh, I don't know. It's always but, to spread fear. That's the best way to control the population. So just keep an eye on the Ebola. Uh, again, read up on Africom. Uh, pay attention to what those soldiers are doing that are going over there. See exactly where they go, what they do. Of course, we're never going to find out. It's going to be hard to find out. But um, you know, our soldiers in Afghanistan, they're not fighting a war against terror. They're protecting poppies, you know, opium fields. You know. Yeah. So, um, but, think, uh, uh, yeah. Do you think the government uh, conducted experiments to, uh, you know, test balding? No. I don't huh. Know. So you, you think Were you a victim natural? of such a conspiracy? Theory? I believe so, yeah. I, I think I it's the government. It. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Cause we, but what, what do you do, Larry, if, like, this Ebola, if it keeps, keeps getting worse, more people come down with Ebola, and they say, hey, well, guess what? We have a vaccine. What do you do, Larry? No way. I ain't doing it. You don't take it? No. Because uh, we were talking earlier this week, neither one of us has ever had a flu shot, right? Fuck no. And they they're giving away at your, uh, your work, right? Yeah, yeah, you could get – yeah, they were giving away free flu shots at work. Oh, fuck you. No, I, off, I looked in because you wanted me to look at the flu shot a little bit, and I, I just read up uh, some stuff right before the show. But uh, the big problem with flu shot is you don't know what's going in there. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and also, the way they fight the flu, and the, <clears throat> they they guess. They guess at what the major strain of the influenza is going to be, and they concoct a uh, flu shot to fight that strain. So they could be wrong about what they're even fighting. So you could get yeah. a completely meaningless flu shot. But then what's in those flu shots can be detrimental to your health. And uh, 800 kids got narcolepsy uh, from the uh, um, H1N1 vaccines, and or the flu shots, I guess I should say. And the big problem with vaccines in general is the presence of mercury. And they, they tell you that they've taken the mercury out of uh, flu shots in vaccines and stuff, but they really haven't. They just changed the name. It's, it's, they, it goes by a name like Thermisolnol or something like that. It's, it's still <laughs> mercury. It's still just mercury. You know, like how they just changed aspartame's name. So, oh no, it's not aspartame. No, it's still aspartame. They just changed the name. So you're still getting mercury in those flu shots, and that, that can cause a lot of problems. And uh, so, yeah, don't take the flu shot. And no. and they also exaggerate the effectiveness of the flu shot. They they try to say it has like a 60 percent of, uh, efficiency rate or something, but what they don't tell you is that is. 50, it's actually like 59%, but it's of people who get the flu. Now, in the general U.S. population, 2.7% of people get the flu. So you have a very small chance to get the flu anyway. Then if you do get the flu, if you're part of that 2.7%, you have a 59% chance that the, the flu shot will be effective. So that means, in general, you have about a 1% chance of that flu shot being effective against the flu if you're just walking around every day. So is it really worth that to risk your health to get 
one percent better chance of not getting the flu. And once again, like, is it really that big of a deal? You lay in bed for two days and you watch movies and take NyQuil. You'll be all right. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't understand why people are so scared of getting the flu. Oh, no, I got the flu. Well, well the flu can't kill you. you know. Oh, come on, dude. Any, well, I, anything could kill you. A teaspoon of water could kill you. That 1918, the huge flu epidemic, that was huge, real deadly. They actually, of course, at the hockey show, we should remember, they... Got, they postponed the uh, Stanley Cup. You know, they didn't have they got out of Stanley Cup that year because of the flu influenza. You know what else they didn't have that year? Nyquil. Yeah, but NyQuil you know why? <clears throat> I heard a theory one time about why that influenza was so bad back in 1980 because it was after the First World War, and uh, they just started treating um, uh, like aspirin and stuff was just becoming prevalent for the treating of fever and stuff, and they think that by doing that at that time. The, they uh, limited the body's natural defense system to fight the influenza because fever is how it can actually be good, you know, because it, it breaks eventually, but it, it fights off the pathogens and stuff in the blood. When you have a fever, it's your body trying to heal itself, kind of. But because they were suppressing the fever so much that it allowed the influenza to spread even more. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. But uh. You know what I like about the flu? I like that time where you're like, you got the fever, you're on the NyQuil, you're in that haze, and you're just, whatever's on TV is good enough, and you just get into that weird thought patterns and stuff. I don't know. You're kind of tripping, but you're not. I had like a flu it. like all last week. For uh, it, I'm still not back, to, uh, no fever, and just my stomach just feels tired, you know? Well, You've been but, sick uh, for about seven years. Yeah, but uh, no fever or anything, but... Yeah, the, the infectious disease is very uh, interesting realm for conspiracies. Uh, maybe next, well, I don't know next week, but we got to do a show on AIDS sometime. And uh, everybody's that's got not, AIDS, 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 AIDS. That's not exactly what people think it is. Uh, there, uh, yeah. So all kind of uh, the polio vaccine. We could do a story about the polio vaccine. You know anybody who feels poly lately? No. That's uh, Chris Rock, I think. 